In 4chan's nearly 20-year history, the site has seen its fair share of high-profile criminal activity. Many of you might be familiar with some of the more grisly stories, such as the nightmarish case involving a murderer posting gruesome images of his victim to the website. It's a dark story among dozens of other disturbing crimes that have been shared anonymously to the board. But on 4chan, not all crimes are created equal. Some of 4chan's most infamous and compelling criminal stories aren't actually related to murder at all and are far less serious in nature. The case is becoming notorious simply due to the sheer idiocy of the criminals responsible. From a coupon counterfeiter admitting to defrauding companies for hundreds of thousands of dollars, to a thrill-seeking con man posting himself committing a bank robbery, to a college professor getting exposed for assaulting protesters with a bike lock, in today's video I'd like to take a look at some of 4chan's most mind-bogglingly stupid lawbreakers, and also instances where members of 4chan and banded together to bust dim-witted perps. These are 4chan's dumbest criminals. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Ground News for sponsoring today's video. Ground News is a news app and website that aggregates breaking news headlines from publications across the political spectrum. Unfortunately, today's journalists are so concerned with being outrageous for clicks, it's often hard to find the truth of the story. Ground News levels the playing field by putting all the various news organization reports in one place, making it easier for you, the reader, to spot bias and understand the actual keys of the story. Ground's website has these super useful visual indicators showing all of the articles written about a topic, the left, right, and center bias of their sources, and the company that owns the source itself. Using Ground, let's look at this story regarding Zelensky coming to the US this week. Now that's a spicy headline right there, but thanks to Ground we can kind of make some sense of this as tags reveal the origin of the reporting is from a far-right Russian news org involved with the Russian government. Scrolling down a bit you find a more realistic interpretation of events, just the facts. It's really useful having these biases highlighted. And look, I know that's just a nitpick, but these small nitpicks add up over time, and that's why I love Ground News so much, because it really helps highlight the biases out there. Look, if you guys want to be more informed regarding the news and the biases that are out there, I highly recommend you check out Ground News. Their link is in the description box. Big shout out to them for sponsoring. Now, let's get on to the story. There are few crimes out there more romanticized in media than bank robberies. From TV shows to movies to books, the crime has been featured as the main source of conflict in many a fictional work. This of course leads to morons thinking that the real world works like a movie and uh, you know they get ballsy enough to feel like they can pull off a bank robbery themselves without facing any consequence. And some are even dumb enough to live blog their robbery attempt on 4chan. On August 20th of 2015, an anonymous 4chan user creates a thread where they claim they would be giving updates about a bank robbery that they were about to commit. The thread begins with the individual describing what they would be wearing while the robbery occurred a hat, sunglasses, and a sweater. To further back up his robbery claims, he stated that he'd be using a realistic looking BB gun to pull off the heist, and that he would make his grand escape on a bicycle that he had purchased for the sole reason of robbing the bank. Okay, today is the day. I'm going to walk into the bank at 3 p.m. with sunglasses, a hat, a sweater, a BB gun, and this note. I'll get out, dump the sweater and BB gun, and ride out on my bike back to the hotel. The robber then adds that he's getting a bit of a buzz on before his robbery attempt. I'm drinking a little bit of liquid courage before the heist. Fuck me, I'll probably be a nervous wreck when I get there. It's bad enough I have anxiety. Now of course the man was initially mocked by his peers, you know, thinking him to be nothing more than an attention-seeking shit poster. Board members were able to discover that this individual was a resident of Jacksonville, Florida due to him announcing his plan in a previous post days earlier. But not much else was known about this individual at the time. This individual's thread announcing his bank robbery plans would fall silent and the OP stopped responding. And most people sort of assumed that uh, it indeed was a shit post and this guy had pussied out. But sure enough, later in the day, the poster begins updating the thread, further fleshing out his robbery plans. In this post, he would reveal that the bicycle that he had planned to use as his getaway had been stolen. So apparently he was either about to go rob the bank and the bike was gone, or he had just finished robbing the bank and the bike was gone. I'm not exactly sure here, but 
One thing is for certain, that being that he actually successfully pulled off the robbery. Because check out this next post. The anonymous poster says, easy as fuck, and attached were dozens of hundred dollar bills. He adds, here's another picture in a neat little pile for you. He says, dude, I walked up to the teller with my sunglasses and hat. I gave her the note. She said, no problem. Typed some shit on the computer, gave me the money, and I walked out the door. Then the exit wouldn't open, so I slammed it. Then it opened. I got rid of my sweater and walked to the hotel. Aside from his bicycle getting stolen, the bank robbery was a complete success, and the man had profited presumably thousands of dollars off of this. But... This man wouldn't be on a dumbest criminals of 4chan list if he didn't get caught, because law enforcement was hot on his heels. And a main reason they were able to track him down was simply due to the incriminating evidence that he was posting to 4chan on his own accord. Our perpetrator would start feeling the heat when he noticed that CCTV footage of himself robbing the bank was being discussed on local news. This would prompt the individual to freak out and make an additional post in the 4chan thread, trying to come up with potential solutions as to not get caught. One of these solutions included buying a motorcycle off of Craigslist using his stolen money and making a quick escape out of town. He would also go on to add that he had completely lost the bag that had his cell phone inside, meaning that he was without any form of mobile device. But his plans of escape wouldn't come to fruition as eventually this bank robber would be tracked down in a neighboring county. It turns out that this dim-witted degenerate was a 26-year-old man named Pedro Francisco Smith. After being identified, Smith was subsequently arrested for the crime and was jailed for armed robbery charges, according to Florida state records. The crime carries a minimum sentence requirement of 10 years in the state. <laughs> you gotta ask yourself, is being the cool guy on 4chan for a day worth potentially 10 years in prison? I, I, do, I don't think so, dude. Pedro Smith was a real dumbass through and through. Hell, it's a miracle he was able to pull off the heist considering his incompetence with getting his bike stolen and just like... The fact that he's live posting this to 4chan, really not a bright guy here. But regardless, easily one of the most mind-bogglingly stupid perps on the list, that was the 4chan bank robbery. Animal cruelty is one of the few things that the collective internet agrees is utterly reprehensible. And many individuals have been mobbed and harassed for perpetrating the act over the years, which is exactly what would happen to a British woman in 2010 named Mary Bale. The story takes place in August of 2010 in the British city of Coventry. In August of this year, a 45-year-old British woman by the name of Mary Bale was walking along the street near her apartment when she stumbled across a kitten named Lola perched up next to a trash bin. In CCTV footage that was later uploaded to YouTube by the cat's owners, Mary Bale can be seen grabbing the cat by the collar and throwing the cat into a plastic waste receptacle nearby, trapping the startled feline inside. The cat was reportedly trapped inside this waste bin for 15 hours. Fortunately, Lola's owners would eventually discover what had happened and they would free the cat before waste management hauled her off to a certain doom. Lola would eventually make a full recovery from the bin tossing, but news of the cat's good health wouldn't quell the online outrage that was forming regarding the tosser herself. This seemingly random act of animal cruelty sparked a massive amount of outrage in the online community. 4chan in particular took major issue with the event and made it their goal to identify this person, track them down, and you know, make them face justice. Cross-referencing the CCTV footage with Google map images of the Coventry area, individuals were eventually able to discover the home address of the perpetrator. Soon after, they would discover the woman's name was Mary Bale, and they would keep digging. They found the woman's Facebook account and the name of her employer. They then discovered not only her phone number, but the phone numbers of her immediate family members and co-workers. 4chan users would then begin making prank calls and sending death threats to all of them in mass, resulting in Mary Bell going into hiding, hoping that the wave of harassment she was receiving would eventually go away. 
But Mary Bell couldn't stay hidden for long because eventually the more conventional media outlets would pick up on the story. Bell began being mobbed by reporters and had to be escorted by police whenever she went out in public. Initially, the woman would deny any wrongdoing whatsoever, telling a local newspaper in an interview that it was, quote, just a cat and that she didn't see what all the fuss was about. Statements like this would only throw more fuel to the fire and pressure would mount, eventually getting the woman to admit that she had made a mistake. In the wake of the outrage, Mary Bell would issue a public apology stating, quote, I cannot explain why I did this. It is completely out of character and I certainly did not intend to cause any distress to Lola or her owners. Despite her eventual apologetic disposition, Mary Bell would be facing a criminal charge as a result of her action. In October of 2010, Bell would reportedly plead guilty to one count of animal cruelty. She was compelled to pay over 1,400 pounds in compensation to Lola Lola's owner and the courts collectively, and was forbidden from owning pets for a period of five years. But in all honesty, legal consequence was the least of Mary Bell's problems. The negative online backlash caused by Lola's tossing had essentially ruined her life. Her name was relentlessly mocked and derided online. There were entire Facebook groups dedicated to the slander and harassment of Mary Bell. Parody Twitter accounts imitated her likeness and tweeted various obscenities in her name. And YouTube channels created satirical recreations of the incident that went massively viral. The sheer amount of vitriol made life for Mary Bell a living hell. The whole ordeal reportedly sending the woman into a deep depression. With over a decade now separating us from the cat tossing incident, it has largely been forgotten about in the public discourse. But in the internet history books, it will remain as one of the most significant 4chan led vigilante justice campaigns to ever occur. Next up, the 4chan coupon scammer. There's some folks out there that take couponing to an extreme level, spending hours upon hours a day collecting insane amounts of coupons and racking up big savings in the process. Everybody knows at least one person that's like a coupon freak that knows how to essentially break the system and get super cheap deals or even at, at some point have the manufacturer send them money. Your last transaction is $343.61. All right, are you ready for my coupons? I'm ready for your coupon. All right. We actually owe you money. Yes! That is awesome! We owe you $6.17 today. But the 4chan user we're going to be discussing today took breaking the system to an entirely new level. Back in 2010, an anonymous 4chan user managed to reverse engineer the coupon creation process. Through their efforts, they devised a way to create fake coupons that not only looked official, but were able to be redeemed in actual stores. These coupons were relatively innocuous, looked extremely legit, and didn't raise a suspicion. The individual's coupons varied from less severe infractions, such as energy drinks, laundry detergents, and other common grocery items. But some of his coupons bordered on absurdity. One particularly infamous coupon minted by this scammer promised a free PlayStation 3. While most retailers would object this outlandish coupon, images do exist of people showing off successful purchases, meaning there are a few documented cases of these seemingly ridiculous coupons working. 4chan would serve as a repository for the anonymous fraudster to post many of his fake coupons, and members of the community would use it to get savings of their own. The fake coupon trend would go undetected for about a year as internet users took full advantage of these newfound savings. The would-be ringleader of this coupon fraud wave would eventually release a highly detailed guide on how to create them to 4chan. The guide would go viral on the internet. I think it goes without saying that this coupon fraudster was getting a little bit brazen and naturally a little law enforcement heat would follow. As time progressed, many of the businesses that were being ripped off by the coupons began to notice something suspicious was happening. Chief among these was News America Marketing, a coupon-centric division of the Rupert Murdoch-owned news company. The company began to notice unusual coupon redemption trends, which resulted in authorities being alerted and an investigation being launched. After a long and extensive investigation, this unlikely fraudster was eventually discovered. The culprit was eventually caught in May of 2011, the entire operation being headed by a 22-year-old student named Lucas Henderson, who was ironically studying computer security at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Henderson used his technical expertise learned online and through school to make these fake coupons, and allegedly used a Tor browser to hide his location while making them. 
However, the man would eventually slip up and reportedly exposed his IP address to the administrators of a website called Zocklet.net. The admins would then forward this information to authorities. During the FBI's investigation of Henderson, he would admit to being the one responsible for creating the coupon fraud guide that ended up on 4chan. And when it came to damages, the man had racked up a serious price tag with these fake coupons. The biggest loser was Procter & Gamble, who had reportedly lost over $200,000 dollars in profits because of Henderson's actions. Charged with wire fraud and the trafficking of counterfeit goods, Henderson was eventually sentenced to three years of supervision by authorities and was ordered to pay restitution of $900,000 to the companies that he affected. Despite Henderson's arrest, the trend of fake coupons would continue for the foreseeable future. As far as Henderson goes, it's not publicly known what became of the man, but I think it's safe to say that the guy is not printing any more fake coupons. The years leading up to and following the election of Donald Trump were rife with political protest. It seemed like a week couldn't go by without a high-profile clash between the right and the left making news headlines. It's no surprise that California served as a frequent battleground for protesters, with the city of Berkeley in particular being the location of many well-documented Antifa vs. MAGA skirmishes. And at a 2017 Berkeley protester clash, we would see the birth of one of 4chan's most hated enemies, the Bike Lock Basher. The story of the Bike Lock Basher begins at a chaotic political rally held in Berkeley on April 15th of 2017. Rich Black, who had previously organized a pro-Trump rally in the Berkeley area a month before, advertised this particular protest as a fight for free speech. And many conservative and far-right protesters showed up to voice their support for the cause. Naturally, this resulted in a counter-protest popping up, with many liberal and anti-fascist activists being present as well. The two groups would face off almost immediately, and it wasn't long before skirmishes began to break out. Objects such as rocks were thrown and eventually the fighting between the two groups escalated to the point where fireworks were being set off and police intervention was required. By the end of this Berkeley scuffle, 20 people were arrested with multiple being reported as injured and the entire event was seen by many as a complete disaster. Despite the large number of fights that took place on the day, there was one violent protester that stood out amongst everyone. This individual was a man who was seen bashing people's heads with a large bike lock, with clips of him doing so going viral on the internet. The most popular of these clips showed him violently smashing the head of another protester who was attempting to break up a confrontation. The sheer brutality of the bike lock basher angered many online. And after all, I mean, it's like, why are you going to hit a guy that's trying to break up a fight? What kind of sense does that make? You're just being an agent of chaos at that point. Individuals on both the right and the left were calling for the bike lock basher to be brought to justice. But initially, there was little that anybody could do. The anonymous figure was a masked man whose identity identity was completely unknown, and nobody had any real leads as to who he could possibly be. That was until some of the cyber sleuths on 4chan's politically incorrect board made it their mission to bust the bike lock basher. Users began combing through every single recorded instance of the rally, and they eventually discovered one clip in which the man they thought to be the culprit was unmasked. They then began cross-referencing the maskless man's attire and general appearance to his mask depiction superimposing their faces together to see if they matched. After becoming confident that they had successfully identified the face of the bike lock basher, they then took to social media to see if they could attach the face to a name. And after discovering facial matches through Twitter, LinkedIn, and OkCupid, they made the bizarre discovery that the individual in question was in fact a professor who worked at Diablo Valley College. Ironically, the professor taught ethics and philosophy at the school. His name was Eric Clanton. This information was subsequently forwarded to authorities who started their own investigation into the matter. Around this time, Eric Clanton had apparently discovered that the internet had identified him and started deactivating his social media accounts. Despite his efforts, the police managed to track Eric Clanton down in a communal house in Oakland, and the man was soon arrested. Upon searching his room, police reportedly found a wide variety of contraband, including metal knuckles and psilocybin mushrooms. After his arrest and charges, Clanton's lawyer went on Tucker Carlson to discuss the proceedings. Why would you try to excuse an assault like that? First of all, I'm not excusing anything. 
Uh, you're jumping to conclusions, Tucker. Um, we have a presumption of innocence in this country, and I assume that you as a patriotic American believe in it. There's an accusation that my client did certain things that are against the law. None of that has been proven. It hasn't even been proven that he was present at that event, much less that he hit anyone, much less that he did so without justification. Eric Clanton was facing some pretty serious charges, but managed to evade major jail time thanks to a plea deal. In the end, Eric Clanton took a three-year supervised probation plea deal and managed to have most of his serious charges dismissed. However, there were additional non-legal consequences. Sometime after the bike lock bashing event, it's been reported that Eric Clanton no longer worked at the university. And it goes without saying that his reputation was permanently damaged because of his actions. Since taking the plea deal, the disgraced professor has remained out of the public eye. Our next story is a case when 4chan shitposting goes too far and someone gets arrested over it. In the early days of the internet, the web was the wild, wild west, and 4chan was the saloon of degeneracy. One way that people fucked with each other in the early days of 4chan was through copy pastas. I'm sure most of you watching know what a copy pasta is, but if you don't know, it's essentially a fake made up story intended to outrage people who stumble across it. They often appear as large walls of text that purport some ridiculous circumstance or serve to describe some disturbed individual in an effort to rile people up. That being said, one 4chan user would eventually make a copy pasta that was so potent that it would lead to police showing up at his door. This is at the time 20 year old grocery store employee Jake Brom. And on September 18th of 2006, Jake would create an alarming threat on 4chan claiming that several dirty bombs would explode around the United United States and the resulting chaos would lead to the death of over 100,000 people. On Sunday, October 22nd, 2006, there will be seven dirty explosive devices detonated in seven different U.S. cities. The death toll will approach 100,000 from the initial blast, and countless other fatalities will later occur as a result of the radioactive fallout. The bombs themselves will be delivered via trucks. These trucks will pull up to stadiums hosting NFL games in each respective city. All stadiums to be targeted are open-air arenas, excluding Atlanta's Georgia Dome. Due to the open air, the radiological fallout will destroy those not killed in the initial explosion. The explosions will be near simultaneous, with the city specifically chosen in different time zones to allow for multiple attacks at the same time. The 22nd of October will mark the final day of Ramadan, as it would fall in Mecca. Al-Qaeda will automatically be blamed for the attacks. Later, through Al Jazeera, Osama bin Laden will issue a video message claiming responsibility for what he dubs as, quote, America's Hiroshima. <laughs> <laughs> in the aftermath, civil wars will erupt around the world, both in the Middle East and within the United States. Global economies will screech to a halt. General chaos will rule. Now, if you have any sort of familiarity with internet culture, it's pretty clear that this is like a, just a fucked up hoax post, right? It was a blatant effort to capitalize on people's fear in the years following 9-11. In order to get the most out of his magnum opus, Jake, the individual that posted this thread, continued to copy and paste the message over 40 times throughout the following days, much to the annoyance of fellow 4chan users. But unfortunately for Jake, the post proved to be more successful than he ever had planned for. Screenshots of the post began to reach spaces outside of 4chan and general internet users who were unfamiliar with 4chan's edgy style of shock humor took it completely at face value, becoming concerned that an actual terrorist threat was on the horizon. The viral nature of this post resulted in the FBI getting involved. Eventually, Jake Brom would be identified as the poster and he turned himself in to authorities in October of 2006. When questioned by the FBI, Brom would admit to being the one who crafted the copy pasta stating that he had been in competition with another forum poster to see who could create the most incendiary message. Needless to say, the FBI wasn't entertained by his excuse. Jake Brom would eventually be sentenced to serve six months in federal prison for the hoax, followed by six more months of house arrest. In addition to his conviction, Jake was also ordered to pay $18,000 in restitution to the Cleveland Browns football team and $8,750 to the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. This was due to the cost that stadium owners incurred while preparing for a legitimate bomb threat, including sniffer dogs that had to be deployed and beefier security detail. 
The incident made Jake Brom a sort of cautionary tale of 4chan and he was memed on by the community members for what happened to him. Needless to say, a post as short-sighted as this qualifies you for a 4chan's dumbest criminal award. Couldn't do a 4chan's dumbest criminals list without mentioning the fappening hackers. Back in August of 2014, a collection of nude and intimate photographs of over 100 celebrities was posted to 4chan, resulting in the photos being widely disseminated online. The poster would go on to claim that if they got Bitcoin donations, they would continue posting these images. Apparently, the hacker managed to obtain many high-profile celebrity images through iCloud accounts that were linked to these celebrities themselves. And this was done through an Apple security exploit. And this exploit led to probably one of the most memorable events in internet history, the fappening. The sheer volume of photos that were released was astounding. I mean, this was such a big deal, the mainstream media was talking about it. It even got the celebrities that were victims of the hack even coming out and sort of denying that they were actually being shown in the photos, but it was actually them. Some celebrities even took this a step further, with Jennifer Lawrence in particular stating that anyone who viewed the nude photographs was perpetrating a sexual offense, with her publicist stating that that anyone who posted lewd photos of her would be persecuted by authorities. But needless to say, these pleas for decency and respect fell on deaf ears, and everybody was pretty much celebrating the fappening hacker or hackers. The incident was so notorious, in fact, that it resulted in one of the earliest appearances of 4chan on CNN. The once relatively unknown website was being talked about by the national news and was put in the forefront of online discourse surrounding the ethics of privacy, freedom of speech, and the general culture of the internet. Do we even know who is this 4chan? With all the attention surrounding the fappening leaks, it wouldn't be long before law enforcement got involved. Soon after the leaks had occurred, the FBI stated that it was pursuing an investigation into the ordeal and would begin searching for the identities of the hackers. Due to 4chan's anonymous nature, the process was made difficult but was far from being an impossible task. In October of 2014, the feds tracked the IP addresses of one of the leakers to a house in Chicago, Illinois. This individual would later be arrested and identified as a man named Emilio Herrera. His home was subsequently raided after a warrant had been issued. Herrera's electronic devices were confiscated and taken into FBI possession. Herrera would eventually plead guilty in October of 2017 to obtaining illicit photos using an unauthorized computer. Herrera was sentenced to serve 16 months in prison. In the process of prosecuting Emilio Herrera, it was discovered that there were additional hackers involved with the fappening leaks. Another individual, 36-year-old Ryan Collins, was also arrested after it was discovered that the man had hacked into the accounts of multiple celebrities using the Apple exploit. The man allegedly gained access to these celebrity accounts by sending phishing emails disguised to appear as legitimate, telling the celebs that their account security had been threatened and that they needed to change their security details. Ryan Collins was found guilty and was also sentenced to serve 18 months in prison. Another individual, Edward Majerzyk, was also convicted of the same crime. Edward's connection to the fappening is unique because he didn't actually work with any other hackers unlike the previously mentioned individuals. He was just a lone wolf that had managed to figure out the same exploit. The man was later sentenced to serve nine months in prison. Another individual that was part of this hacking circle, George Garfano, was also arrested. Despite attempting to throw his fellow hackers under the bus, the man was still sentenced and got eight months in prison. In testimony, George's attorney would claim that the man had been drawn into criminal activity after being taken advantage of by, quote, more sophisticated hackers. The final individual involved with the fappening hacks to be arrested was a man named Christopher Brannon. And interestingly, Brannon was formerly a school teacher. Out of all the individuals, his actions were the most severe. Brandon not only actively participated in the fappening hacks, but also went as far as using hacks to gain access to images of his own family members. It was discovered that Brandon breached the account of his then underage sister-in-law, as well as multiple accounts of teachers, various school faculty members, and students that attended the school he had previously worked at. For his crimes, Brandon was sentenced to serve 34 months in prison. While many remember the fappening, few realize that those responsible actually got locked up. And well, when it comes to eight to nine months in prison, was it worth it? No. I think that deserves you a spot on a 4chan's dumbest criminals list. Our final story is an old school internet content creator involved with 4chan that 
had some self-incriminating posts wind up on the site, and he got busted for them. This is Thaddeus McMichael, also known as Mad Thad 0890 Known for being an outspoken internet otaku, Mad Thad gained popularity in 2010 thanks to his YouTube videos. Some have described him as terminally online, and his videos were popular on YouTube, Facebook, and 4chan. Thad's videos usually involved him reacting to video game or anime related news and energetically lip syncing to covers of his favorite anime openers. However, what really grabbed the attention of 4chan users was something kind of unrelated to the videos themselves. It was Thad's obsessive postings regarding his fictional anime girlfriend, Kotanaha Katsura. The Katsura character originated from an anime known as School Days and was referred to by Thaddeus as his waifu on many occasions. This obsession resulted in the creation of a YouTube video where he sings Happy Birthday in front of a shrine dedicated to the fictional anime character. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Blow up the chaos, Kotonoha. Thad's bizarre video would go on to garner over 200,000 views, as many marveled at the unabashedly strange fascination Thaddeus had with this anime character often having conversations with himself as if she was actually real underneath photos of him posing with a framed photo of her. Screenshots of these posts were spread across the internet, with many mocking Mad Thad for his unhealthy fixation. But Thad ignored the detractors and took his strange obsession to the next level, posting a video where he appears to have sex with an anime body pillow. This infamous showcase would only contribute to his online infamy, as he would become known as the ultimate archetype for the stereotypical obsessive nerd that was disconnected from reality. Now, despite Thaddeus' cringeworthy activities, the man didn't seem to be harmful in any way, he just kinda liked embarrassing himself online. But over time, internet users would begin to notice some serious red flags that resulted in widespread suspicion about the individual. Sometime between 2011 and 2012, Thaddeus would make some bizarre posts to Facebook, not only saying that he was okay with CP, but he was actually in possession of it. In one reply, he allegedly stated that he could quote, fap to the same CP video for weeks because it's so fucking hot, and in another post he appears to say that he actively fantasizes about adopting a young girl to have sex with them, as well as claiming to having a 20 gigabyte hard drive full of CP. Naturally, these statements along with many other ones associated with Mad Thad were passed on to authorities, and upon the FBI being alerted about Mad Thad, an investigation was opened up on the guy. Upon being questioned by authorities, the anime fan claimed that the posts were just jokes and that he wasn't actually responsible for any illegal activity. However, his claims were disproven as the FBI would search his home and confiscated an 8 gigabyte USB flash drive that was allegedly full of illicit child porn. Facing multiple CP charges, Mad Thad was eventually convicted in 2013. The anime fan took a plea deal that resulted in him getting five years in prison for his crimes. But that was my compendium of 4chan's dumbest criminals. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below, and of course let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.